National Party. That woman is Nicola Sturgeon, the former First Minister of Scotland. She resigned uh, in the middle of March and today she becomes the third senior member of her party to be arrested in connection with this investigation. Uh, it's uh, very early for reaction, but we have had a statement from a spokesperson for Nicola Sturgeon, where they confirmed that Miss Sturgeon had, by arrangement with Police Scotland, attended an interview where she was arrested and questioned in relation to Operation Branch Form. Uh, they also went on to say that Ms Sturgeon has consistently said she would cooperate with the investigation if asked and continues to do so. Uh, there's also been a statement from her party, the SNP. Uh, they, of course, point out that this is a live police investigation. They say that the SNP has been cooperating fully with the investigation and will continue to do so. But they also go on to point out that it is not appropriate to publicly address any issues while this investigation is ongoing. Of course, that makes it uh, difficult as well, of course, for journalists. Uh, there are There is what's known as the Contempt of Court Act, uh, which uh, restrains what anyone can say in these circumstances. It, it limits any speculation. But it is fair to say this is a huge development. Uh, a very high-profile politician, a former First Minister, Scotland's longest-serving First Minister arrested today and being questioned as we speak in connection with this investigation into her party's finances. A very big moment, uh, as you say. And uh, just in terms of what impact this will have on the SNP, this operation for a long time, it began in 2021, has been casting a shadow over the SNP. Well, it has, but I think it's fair to say uh, that it's been going on in the background. It, it has, however, over the last couple of months picked up a considerable head of steam. And that, that started uh, with the arrest of Nicola Sturgeon's husband. Uh, he was the former chief executive of the SNP. There are those uh, images of police entering the SNP's headquarters in Edinburgh, removing boxes of uh, documents. They also erected a white tent outside Outside uh, Miss Sturgeon and Peter Morrill's house in Glasgow. They searched the house at the time. Uh, very difficult images uh, for the SNP and indeed for the couple. Um, Peter Morrill was arrested, later released without charge pending further investigation. But it did give a sense of this, uh, this long-running investigation picking up a pace. Uh, the Police Scotland also uh, have brought in the National Crime Agency uh, into this investigation. So it is a multi-agency investigation into the funding and finances of the party. Uh, there was a moment a few weeks ago where they seized a motorhome uh, as well. That is still, as we understand it, impounded. So there's been these very sim these very strong imagery associated with this investigation. A lot of work going on behind the scenes and all the judicial bodies involved uh, keen to emphasise again and again and again the independence of their investigation, uh, which has been ongoing for a couple of years, but has certainly picked up pace over the last couple of months. And Lorna, as you've pointed out, in the absence of uh, much detail in statements, uh, the imagery has become uh, very gripping in this case. And uh, specifically, you've mentioned that tent erected in the front garden of the former First Minister, which became a famous image illustrating the turmoil engulfing the SNP. About that, the Chief Constable said he was aware of it, but was supportive of it because he knew the circumstances and the rationale for utilising it. Uh, but uh, some members of the party at that time felt that the police were being rather uh, heavy handed in their approach. Well, it's extraordinary imagery, uh, but the police would stick by their statement that they have to do what they have to do in order to investigate uh, 
complaints that were raised back in 2021 relating to donations to the SNP party, the donations that were made and were meant to be ring-fenced to fight a future independence referendum. Uh, in any investigation, in fact, they would, uh, they would emphasize that they are following the lines of inquiry without fear or favor. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they were extraordinary images. They will, of course, be part of the, uh, the, the, the move that makes it hard, if you like, for Hamza Youssef, Nicola Sturgeon's successor, to, to move on. He keeps trying to draw lines under it, say, here's my policies, here's what I want to do with the party, the party of government here in Scotland. But remember, one of the earlier arrests, Colin, so the first arrest was Peter, Peter Morrill, that's Nicola Sturgeon's husband, released without charge pending further investigation. Second arrest was Colin Beattie. He was the former treasurer of the SNP. He was released without charge pending further investigation. But that happened on the day when, in, in a sense, Hamza Youssef was trying to reset his government. He wanted to, to do big policy announcements in the Scottish Parliament. They were all overshadowed by this arrest. And then today, Hamza Youssef does a big interview on the BBC. Uh, on the day, it so turns out, uh, that his predecessor as First Minister, um, Nicola Sturgeon, he was very close to her, of course, but on the day his predecessor has been arrested, it's very hard for him to get out from under this, draw a line under it and say, we want to move on. Indeed. And just to mention for viewers who may just be joining us, uh, the breaking news is the former Scottish National Party leader Nicola Sturgeon has been arrested by Police Scotland as a suspect in an investigation into the party's funding. That's the news that we're following. And uh, we are, of course, seeking reaction from across the political spectrum, which we should be bringing you in the next half hour or so. But Lorna, uh, while you're with us, you've mentioned that this is a difficult conundrum for Hamza Youssef. He wants to move past this. But uh, the curious thing about this particular situation is also that there's absolutely nothing he can do about it. Uh, there isn't. A, this, you know, it, it's, a, it's a police investigation. The police are separate from the government. Uh, he, he has always been very clear to say that that process must continue, that politicians play no part in it. But it does make it difficult for the SNP. They have been the dominant force in Scottish politics for a long time now. Uh, polling suggests that Labour are making inroads into that SNP uh, dominance and that were there to be a general election, they could pick up perhaps 15 seats here in Scotland. Remember, this is a party at the moment, Labour, that has one seat in Scotland. So, you know, they're facing problems and challenges, the SNP, from Labour. It won't be helped by this, and it won't help their attempts to reset their policy in government. I think the issue of independence, perhaps, is slightly aside from that, that people who believe in independence will, to a greater or lesser degree, probably still believe uh, and, and support independence. But in terms of supporting the party, the SNP does have a challenge ahead and it is not helped by this continual long-running investigation and this, this arrest today, this, this big news today, this arrest of the former First Minister, former leader of the party, Nicola Sturgeon.